So constraints, they're a great way for you as a developer to deal with the ever expanding number of screen sizes, device rotations, and new form factors like slide over in the iOS world. But one unfortunate casualty in this brave new world of alignment has been the way we animate views. See, it used to be we could go around setting a UI view's position or frame with a fun little UI view animate with duration method and watch our view scoot around the screen. Well, that was fun. Uh, but that's harder to do in a world full of constraints. Constraints don't necessarily play nicely with a view whose frame you're setting explicitly, as you can see here. Well, that leads us to this episode's quick tip sent in by Jacob Cho, a fan of Route 85 and a software engineer at Ensemble, a mobile app developer located in beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia. Jacob notes that many iOS developers forget that in addition to the old way of animating a view's position, you can also animate constraints in iOS. Let's look at how you might do that. Here's my storyboard, and as you can see here, I've got everything set up nicely using constraints. Now to move my UI image view on and off screen, I'm going to want to change this constraint here, the one that sets my image's leading edge to the leading edge of my super view. Right now it's set to minus 180, so it's off screen. So first I'm going to control drag from this constraint into my view controller to make it an IV outlet of type NS layout constraint. This allows me to access it in my code. Now I can adjust it with a standard UI view animate with duration call. In this case, I'll change the constant of the constraint from minus 180 to zero so that it appears on screen, and now we can give it a try. Huh, well that's weird. The, the constant definitely changed, but what happened to my animation? Well, it turns out to get this constant to animate nicely, I need to call layout if needed on my view controller's view within this animation block. We'll give it one more try and, oh. That's much better. I now have a constraint that I can change within an animation block and everything animates smoothly to its final position, except in cases where I want to adjust something besides my constraints constant. Let's take a look at another example. Here I want to adjust this center square to expand or shrink to be either twice or half the width of its neighbors. Now I could do that in theory by adjusting the multiplier on the center views width constraint, but it turns out that changing that multiplier in code doesn't work. See, constraint multipliers are a get-only property, and Xcode will give me an error. So how do I change it? Well, the answer is I don't. Instead, I, can cre I create two completely different constraints and enable or disable either one as necessary. As long as I'm still calling layout if needed in my animation block, this kind of change will still animate. Now, there are two ways I can accomplish this constraint swapping. One way is to create both constraints in Interface Builder, like so. Now, Xcode will complain that these are incompatible, and it's right. So first step, we'll uninstall one of them by checking this box here. Next, we'll control drag both of these constraints into our code to make them IV outlets. And then I can enable or disable these as necessary in my animation block, like this. Once again, you'll notice I make sure we're calling layout if needed in our animation block, and we end up with a nice smooth looking animation. Look at that. The other way to accomplish this would be to create a completely new constraint in code. This is useful when I don't know in advance what I'm going to want this multiplier to be, and I need to create it dynamically. So let's see that in action. This time in my animation block, I'll first remove the old constraint. Next up, I can create a new multiplier. Let's make it slightly random just for fun. Ooh, hey, that is fun. Okay, next I'll create a brand new constraint with this new multiplier and assign it to my center view width property. And then I can add it back in again to my view. Finally, I call layout if needed on the super view in the animation block, and I once again have some nicely animating views that use this new constraint that I've created. And because this is all done using constraints, you'll notice this works as intended on an iPhone, an iPhone in landscape mode, or even, say, a slide over view on an iPad. And once you understand that this trick simply involves removing an old constraint and adding a new one, you might discover a whole new world of animation is available to you simply by turning on and off various constraints. For example, on this screen, I can change all my views to be either left aligned or right aligned simply by adding and removing two different groups of constraints and then calling our now familiar layout if needed method. Pretty neat, huh? Oh, by the way, one fun little quirk about all this, if you add your new constraints before you remove the old ones, iOS will complain about all the incompatible constraints it has to deal with in those like few milliseconds. So always make sure you remove the old ones first before adding the new ones. So thanks to Jacob for the quick tip. Jacob, you're going to get a very stylish Google t-shirt in the mail, but hang on, we're not done yet. You see, now that you know all about constraint animation, I have a couple more quick tips from one of Google's engineers about more efficient ways to implement it. So follow me on to the next video, because we're not done learning just yet. Click here, click here, and uh, otherwise, I'll see you on Route 85. Bye.